What's up, friends? It has been a hot minute since I've been on YouTube, and really it's been like a couple months. Sorry about that, a lot of projects going on. You probably don't care, I don't blame you, but I wanted to break this long hiatus by doing a video on the number one, by far number one question I get on my Instagram, which is what do I use on my hair? What do I do with my hair? And if you don't follow me on Instagram, I will link my Instagram below. It's Mallory King Fitness. Come check it out. Give me a follow. I would love to be friends. But let's go ahead and get started because I've got a couple of products for you guys that I want to share. And the reason why I named this video the holy grail of products for low porosity curly hair is because I've tried a lot of products. <laughs> and these products work incredible for my hair. My hair has become a lot softer and shinier and healthier since starting these products, but also they're pretty much all reasonably priced. So a, a lot of them are actually like really low priced. So that is why these are the holy grail of curly hair, low porosity, especially products. Before I get into the products that I use, I want to first discuss two things. So one, I have been practicing the curly girl, curly hair, girl method, curly hair method. I don't know the, <laughs> what it's called exactly, but the curly hair method um, for six years now. And essentially what that means is that I avoid silicones and sulfates on my hair. It means a lot more than just that, but that is really the simple version of it. And since giving up sulfates and silicone six years ago, I have definitely seen a tremendous difference in my hair health. One big thing is my hair has grown a lot faster since uh, starting that. So before six years ago, my hair would never grow past maybe like right here and my curls, um, you will like notice like my curls when they're closer to like right here have more bounce to them, but because of the length it like pulls them a little bit. Um, I forget what type of curl I have maybe like a 2A or B, I can't, I really can't remember, but they are bouncier when my hair is shorter, but I do really love the length of my hair. So it was able to grow a lot more when I started doing the curly hair method and I gave up the silicones and the sulfates. So that has made a huge difference on my hair. The second thing is, oh, the low porosity. So I did the test and you can just Google like porosity hair test and find out the directions on how to find out your porosity of your hair. But I highly, highly, highly recommend doing this because before, I only figured out that I had low porosity hair like a year ago. The first five years of doing the curly hair method, I just followed that method. I had no idea that I had low porosity hair. And because of that, I wasn't buying the right products for my hair. So since, figuring out that I had low porosity and buying the proper products for my type of hair. My hair has improved even more so, which is so awesome. I love it. Uh, and another thing too is a year ago, we moved from Florida to Colorado, which is a huge difference in climate. So that was definitely like, that's when I started researching more about my hair because when we moved here, my hair was starting to get a lot drier because the climate here is really dry. And in Florida, uh, you know, I have naturally dry hair. That's what most curly haired people have is dry hair. That's why you get the curls. So in Florida, the benefit of that was that my hair would suck in the moisture from the air and it would definitely cause frizz. So I don't really get much frizz out here, which is a huge benefit of Colorado, but I was not getting any moisture from the air. So I have to make sure that I'm getting moisture from the products I'm using. So I have made a lot of changes in my hair routine in the last year. And with these products, with what I've been doing, I'm gonna share all of that with you guys. This has been working wonders. The funny thing is, of course, I decided to film this on a day where like, I'm not having the best hair day. It's not bad, but it's not the best. But that's just, you, if you have curly hair, you know all about that life, all about it. And disclaimer, this isn't just for curly haired people. There are definitely many tips here that people can take that have non-curly hair. So let's get started. Before I get into the shampoo and conditioner I use, I wanna talk about this product that I learned about in the last year that I was not using before and has made a tremendous difference in the health of my hair. And that is doing a pre-poo, a pre-shampoo treatment before I shampoo my hair. So hopefully, let's see if we can, I don't, oh, there we go, yeah. So this brand is a little bit more expensive than all the other brands we're gonna go over today. The Organi Crow, Organi Grow 
Hair Co. The Organi Grow Hair Co. <laughs> this uh, line of products I found on their Instagram page. They're pretty popular on Instagram with the curly hair community. So found out about them through there. I actually bought their entire low porosity package. I ordered this like six months ago after I had tried some other low porosity products that were recommended online, wasn't cutting it for me. So I ordered this entire line. Like they have a whole package that you can get for your specific hair type. And the website actually even has the porosity test so you can figure out which package you should get based on your hair. So I ordered this and honestly, like I'll talk a little bit of more. Well, I'll just talk about it here. Uh, I don't, I wasn't a huge fan of their shampoo and conditioner. It wasn't doing it for me. I wanted to keep looking for something else, but I do love this pre poo shampoo. So essentially all it is, um, yeah, I can't pronounce any of that crap, <laughs> but they are oils. They are light oils. And that is something that is great for low porosity hairs. You don't want heavy oils. You don't want coconut oil. Um, those kinds of oils are really heavy on your hair and also have protein in them. So protein is something that most people with low porosity hair want to avoid. And that's something that I learned just in the last few months. There's always something like, it's just incredible. Like what else can I learn about my freaking hair? But I'll talk a little bit more about the protein issue in a second. So this pre-poo uh, treatment I will put on, I shampoo my hair usually once or twice a week. Uh, with low porosity hair, you do tend to get more buildup because, um, how do I explain this the best way possible? I'm not an expert, guys, I'm not an expert. But with low porosity hair, so if you are not sure what hair you have, if, if you tend to have buildup easily, the products and dirt and stuff like that build up onto your scalp, then you might have low porosity hair. If you also notice that when you take a shower and it takes forever for your hair to like really get damp and like it, it seems like it, your hair struggles to like hold in the moisture from the water, you might have low porosity hair. And if it takes you like forever for your hair to dry naturally, you might have low porosity hair. So what low porosity hair means is that your, <laughs> I'm so sorry if I messed this up, but your hair cuticles, um, have a really hard time opening, so they're closed. So that's one reason why you don't wanna do heavy products on low porosity hair, because it's it's just gonna sit on the top of your hair and it's just gonna build up and it's just gonna like make it, ow, I just scraped. Um, it's just gonna like drag it down. So light oils are great, and I'll talk more about light oils in a second, but yeah, that's why I have to shampoo my hair once to twice a week, because I get that build up. And I want to get rid of that buildup because if I don't get rid of that buildup and I just try to co-wash, I just try to like do a conditioning, it ain't gonna, the conditioner is not going to be able to, um, enter my shaft. <laughs> that don't sound right. I don't know how to say it, but it's not going to be able to get penetrate. <laughs> this sounds so naughty. <laughs> it ain't going to work because you have all that buildup and other product on top that you have to cleanse with a shampoo. I do this first, I do this the morning that I shampoo my hair. So I shampoo at night, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but uh, when I'm gonna, when I have my shampoo day, my shampoo day, um, I will do this in the morning, and it tells you the instructions, you know, just blather it, put a ton in your hair is what I do. And then I'll wear my hair up for that day because my hair like looks like it's really, I mean it is, it's really oily. So um, I put, I just leave it up for that day and then I shampoo at night. So let's move on. But pre-poo, using this is absolutely imperative for low porosity peeps that use a clarifying shampoo. And that's what I'm gonna show you next. So, Shea Moisture, anybody that has curly hair probably knows about this brand, Shea Moisture. It is available at pretty much any like grocery store, drug store, and it's cheap. It's very inexpensive. They recently, I don't know how recently, but not too long ago, came out with the low porosity protein free shampoo. So again, I will talk to you guys when we get to the deep conditioner about more about why um, I need to avoid protein. But the thing is, is that I was using Shea Moisture before I tried the Organi Grow line, but I wasn't using one that was specific to low porosity hair. And I noticed that I was not getting rid of the buildup. It was, you know, that's why I wanted to keep trying new things. So when I found this low porosity, and this one's the Boba Tea, Boab, Boob, 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 Boob,
I don't know. Um, and tea tree oils. <laughs> it's the low porosity shampoo, guys. <laughs> and this has worked wonders for my hair because it's a clarifying shampoo. So it is going to be a little harsher on your hair than, say, something that's not made for low porosity hair because we do have to, um, it's harder for us to get that buildup out. So that's why the pre-poo is, the pre-poo, I love these names, poo-poo, no poo, pre-poo. <laughs> That's why the pre-poo is really important because it helps protect against the harsher chemicals that are used in here. But this is still sulfate free. It's got no sulfates, no parabens. Is that how you say it? No, I'm going to totally mess this one up. Philatolites. Fit, fit, fitholites. <laughs> no propylene glycol. <laughs> suck at the English language. No propylene glycol, no mineral oil, no animal testing. So it still doesn't have the sulfate. It's still curly girl friendly, but it is a little bit um, harsher than other shampoos. And that's why I use the pre-poo. Now I use, my hair is on this bottle. <laughs> I use the same line for my conditioner, the Boaba and Tea Tree Oils Low Porosity Protein Free Conditioner. And I love this. So I will condition my hair every other night. I'll shampoo it once or twice a week, usually twice a week, because we are like, we're, we're active. So we're out hiking a lot and stuff. And I don't use a lot of products, you guys will see. I use three products. And so I don't get a lot of buildup from that, but I do get like, I sweat a lot and like stuff like that. So dirt. I work out a lot. So uh, I will I will definitely condition my hair every other night just so I can like spruce it up and get it like nice and moisturized and stuff like that. So yeah, I use that every other night. Except for, look at my nostrils. Except for when I shampoo my hair. When I'm just co-washing, not using the shampoo, that's the conditioner I use. But when I have shampooed my hair, that night, I will follow it up with my deep conditioner. I have two deep conditioners that I use, and I will explain why I use two. This first one is my go-to. This is the one that I use 95% of the time, and I flipping love it. Guys, <gasps> I'm pretty sure this will work great for any freaking hair type, curly, straight, like any porosity. I am obsessed with this uh, deep conditioner, so I'm not even going to try to pronounce it because I'm just going to screw it up like I have everything else, <laughs> but I'm going to do it. Ar I can't, I'm reading it backwards too. Arvazalia. I don't know, but I found it on Amazon and I'm going to link all of the products below. I should probably have said this a long time ago. All the products that I'm going to show you guys are going to be linked below so you can just quickly like go research them, check them out. But this deep conditioner has been so good to my hair. It has made it so much healthier. Like I'm not getting breakage. It's not tangling as much. It's just really moisturizing my hair. It gives it a nice little glossiness to it. I love this deep conditioner. Um, the reason why I use, I had just recently, a couple months ago, found this is because I realized that I'm supposed to be avoiding protein with the low porosity hair. So protein, if you get too much protein in your hair and your hair is not built for high protein, like it, it doesn't need more protein, which is the case with low porosity hair. Um, it's the opposite. I think I, from my understanding with high porosity hair, you do need more protein in your hair. Um, but I realized when I started doing research that all of my products, except for the organic uh, grow because they were made for low porosity, but like I was still using, what was I using? A different deep conditioner. Um, and it, oh, and the shampoo and conditioner, the Shea Moisture ones that I was using before I got the organic grow. grow. Um, they had protein in them. And also the styling, the gel that I had even had protein in it. And I was noticing that I was getting like a lot of breakage and my hair looked dull. And that's why I started like researching like what the hell is going on? And found out that I was supposed to be avoiding protein. So I found this deep conditioner that's protein free and it has been unbelievable to my hair. I love it. So what I will do is once or twice a week after I shampoo my hair, I will like douse my hair in this stuff because I got a lot of hair and I'll like comb it through, make sure it gets in there nice and deep like, and then I will get out of the shower with it still on. I will put my hair in this beautiful, lovely, I, my husband thinks I look so sexy when I've got this bad boy on for the rest of the night. We ain't doing it that night because mom is wearing this all night. Put my hair in this nice little cap and 
put it, guys, I have a humongous hair towel, like microfiber cloth thingy, because I have so much hair. <laughs> but I will wrap that over my head and I will sleep with my deep conditioner on. Now, from my understanding, uh, what this does by doing the cap and the towel is it creates a apparently greenhouse effect on your hair because with low porosity hair, to open up those hair shafts, hair cuticles, uh, you need warmth. So it's actually a good thing to um, have hot water with low porosity hair, which is awesome because I love hot showers. My husband thinks I'm like gonna just melt, but I love the hot showers. So that's actually a good thing. It helps open up those shafts and that's the exact thing that's happening at night when I have my deep conditioner. So instead of like having to sit under like a blow dryer for 30 minutes because the heat helps, um, again, penetrate, it helps open up those cuticles and it helps the conditioner penetrate your hair. I don't like doing that and I already like shampoo pretty much right before bed. So I'll do that and I'll sleep in that and the greenhouse effect is that it traps the heat, it warms up your head and it traps the heat in there and that heat is going to help open up those cuticles overnight. So I sleep all night with my deep conditioner in and it really gets nice and deep like in dare. I hate myself. Um, so that's what I do. And then in the morning I wake up, I wash it out. Um, I do go ahead when I wash it out and put a little bit of the regular conditioner in just so I can do, do that. Like, I don't know why I do it this way, but I do. I put a little conditioner in and then I'll like finger comb my hair and then I'll plop it. So plopping, plopping is what we're going to go over next. And then we're going to talk about, oh wait, hold on. We'll talk about plopping in just a second. I mentioned that I do have a second deep conditioner. So this one I have only used once and I plan on using it just every six weeks. And this one is by Shia Moisture. It's the Manuka Honey and Mafura Oil Intensive Hydration Hair Mask. There we go. Now, the reason why I use this one every about every six weeks is because you do need a little bit of protein in your hair for anybody, for low porosity peeps. So because none of my products now have protein in them, I need to make sure that I am getting a little bit of protein in my hair every once in a while. So uh, every six weeks I will use that deep conditioner and I really like it. And I mean, I've only used it once, but everything so far so good. So I use that, I like that, it had good reviews. Yeah, whatever. Let's get to styling now. So styling wise, I, um, I'm gonna show you guys the products and then I'm gonna talk to you about plopping. I have three things that I use. Now, I still have some products left. I'm going to need to get some new stuff just here in a moment. Let me tell you guys how styling is supposed to work for uh, curly hair peeps, and especially for low porosity hair. It's supposed to go liquid, cream, so that's like your gel, or just, you know, styling gel, cream, whatever, um, and then oil. And that is exactly what I have here. So my first one is the Organi Grow Hair Co. I still have their leave-in conditioner left. And this is a liquid, so that goes first. You put in your leave-in conditioner. Now, to be honest, guys, I'm not like super duper crazy about, again, like this brand. The only thing I really love about this brand is that pre-poo shampoo, pre-shampoo. But uh, I will probably like just kind of experiment and see if I can find uh, a good leave-in conditioner. It's got to be protein-free, so um, this definitely does the job now. I like it enough to keep it. So put the leave-in conditioner in first, spray that all around my hair, and then I will put the Organi Grow Hair Care Conditioning Curl Custard, which again, this one I'm not like... It's not like my favorite thing. I feel like I could maybe find something I like a little bit more, but it does the job. It's good. I, I can't tell if it's focusing or not. I don't know. Uh, again, this will all be linked below. So it definitely gets the job done. Uh, I enjoyed it enough. And then um, when I'm done, when my hair has dried after I've styled it is when I put the oil in. And I use Argon, Argon? I am the worst at this, guys. I'm so sorry, I am not a hair expert. I apparently can't even speak English for the most part. But I use Argon Oil, which my cousin sent me this straight from Morocco. She went to Morocco a couple months ago and she sent me this. Isn't that cute? She, knew, she knows I have crazy curly hair and that would work good for it. Love her. Um, but I actually have a, a big thing of almond oil too and almond oil works really well. Again, remember, you don't want heavy oils on your hair for low porosity hair and for most curly hair. So light oils, almond oil, argon oil work great. So when this runs out, I'm just gonna use the rest of my almond oil. 
but those are the products I use for styling and the way I style. Like I said, when I'm conditioning my hair, I will condition it and then I will finger comb through it and then I'll do something that's called plopping. So if you know about the curly hair method, I'm sure you've heard of plopping, but for those of you that don't, for those of you that are trying to learn how to do your curls, which trust me, I've been there for most of my life, um, still trying to figure it out. <laughs> um, plopping means that you're simply just basically scrunching and I'm not gonna do it too much because it's not something you do when your hair's dry, but I do it in the shower. So I do it when the conditioner's still in my hair, I will plop the living shit out of my hair. Plop them, plop them, plop, plop, plop. The more you plop, the more you're gonna get like nice defined curls. Do that and then I will rinse out my conditioner and then I will flip my hair over and I will plop the hell out of my hair for another like five minutes, five solid minutes. And then that's when I will, so if I'm not doing, like leaving my deep conditioner in, I don't put my cap on, I just put my towel on. Um, and I'll even like, mm, I don't think you're actually supposed to. I don't know if it's okay with the microfiber towel, but like sometimes I do plop a little bit with the towel just because it takes so long for the moisture to get out of my hair. So I just try to squeeze out as much as I can. But yeah, you wanna mainly just plop with your hand plop as much as possible at every opportunity while your hair is wet. So shower, and then when I've rinsed the conditioner and I'm getting out of the shower, and then, so after I get out of the shower, I take my hair out of the towel and I will do my products. I will do leave-in, conditioner, custard, and then when I do, after I do the curling custard, like or when I put it in, I will plop the hell out of my hair again. And then uh, I usually shower at night, almost always I shower at night, so I will do all of that, and then I will throw my hair back in my towel and I will sleep in my towel. And then I wake up and it's usually pretty darn curly because the thing is, is I don't diffuse my hair. I don't put heat on my hair, partially, mainly because I'm really lazy and a little bit because like I know it's not great for your hair. And to be honest, like we spend so much time outside here in Colorado, I've noticed too, like I've been getting some sun damage and like my hair's been like getting a little bit lighter. That was when I realized that I needed to start like doing better with my hair, start deep conditioning it. I wasn't even deep conditioning it until like the last like three to six months. Um, so yeah, take a lot better care of my hair. So when I wake up in the morning, it's pretty much all the way dry. I'll take it out of the towel, I'll let it completely air dry, and then that's when you wanna add your oil. So you wanna do the oil when it's dry, just squirt a little bit in your hand, rub it together, and then start from the ends and just And that has given it a really nice shine. And, oh, excuse me. And it's helped with the frizz. And another thing I learned too is if you are dealing with frizz, if you live in a humid place, um, I think, I think you would do it before you do the oil. You would put a little bit of your gel into your hand and just rub it, a, like really, really little amount, rub it around the crown of your head. And that can help keep the frizz down. Wow, 23 minutes of me talking. I'm exhausted. <laughs> this introvert needs to go shut the hell up for a long time. But I hope this was helpful. Those are all the products I use. The final thing I want to leave you guys with is just a little bit of an elaboration on the growth because that's really the number one question I get when people ask me like, what do I do with my hair? They want to know, how did you grow it? And honestly, I don't have the exact answers. Like I didn't take any specific vitamins or anything like that. I know when I was pregnant with my son that my hair started to grow and I noticed that it was growing longer than it ever had before that was right when I got pregnant was like a bit maybe a year after I started the curly hair method so I think a mixture of the hormones and maybe the prenatal vitamin I was taking along with the fact that I was following this new method and like taking better care of my hair I think those two things allowed it to grow longer than ever but another thing too is again Instagram Mallory King Fitness I started my fitness journey about a two years before I got pregnant with my son and I used to eat like crap. I used to eat processed food, junk food, like all day long. I didn't exercise or anything. Like I didn't drink enough water. And that has completely changed. Like the last six years of my life, I take care of my body. I feed it well. I drink plenty of water. So I think all of those things combined has allowed my hair to be a lot healthier. And that has allowed it to grow, allowed it. Why did that sound weird? it's a lot longer now. So unfortunately there is no like pill or gummy or something that I use. I mean, I know they're out there, so by all means, but that's just, I think that's the way to go. I mean, this is, if you want long hair, that's great motivation to just be healthier. Whew! Link below to my Instagram. I would love if you guys would give me a follow on here, give me a follow on Instagram. I am gonna be posting more here. I'm sorry, I'm like 
shouting and pointing at you, but I'm going to be posting on here a lot more. So if you enjoyed this video, if you want to hear more about my fitness journey, I'm going to be talking about a lot of random things on here. So give that a uh, subscribe and yeah, if you have any questions, definitely drop the uh, questions below. What do YouTubers say? Subscribe, like this video, subscribe and comment below. Bye. <laughs>